Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting to order for Thursday, May 26, 2022. Uh, the time is now 7.05 p.m. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, and to the nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For anyone who is interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. Um, next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the April 23rd, 2022 workshop meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the April 28th Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the minutes for the May 21st workshop, which are not completed. Um, Sue, I still need to get that up on YouTube. Oh, those are done. Yeah, that's what I mean. They're not done. They're not yet completed. No, they're done. Oh, they're done? Oh, okay. So you, yeah. okay, cool. I didn't get a chance to look them over yet. Okay. I didn't even know they were done. So I, I'll table that until next okay. time. Thank you for doing those. So I'm surprised. Yep. Okay. Next is the treasurer's <laughs> report. Um, Irene, I'll let you Use talk. The budget? Uh, yep, the budget is up there. So those are the... Second. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Yep. Um, let me see. So looking at tax revenue, again, the bulk of our tax revenue comes in the early part of the year, and we're at 97.77% of the budget. Um, the only thing I was looking at, I thought it was a little bit off, we might have to recalculate interim taxes, yeah. but at the same time, that's something that's a little bit difficult to get in, a feel for based interim, on sales. Interim yeah, taxes, say, interim, yeah. Interim tax is hard to calculate. Yeah, you, you have to do of, like a three-year trend, but you yeah. might have some years that are abnormally high and you might have some years that are abnormally yeah. low. So we, we could uh, try to take a look back and see if there's uh, anything else. Um, if you could scroll down to uh, 350. Mm -hmm. Again, just reiterating, we haven't received any state grants, so the item listed 354.01. Um, down, if you could scroll down to 360, uh, we did see a large jump uh, because there was a large amount of, of projects, and that in part was due to Dutch Valley, um, and the same as you'll see with building permits too. So we're expecting those numbers to change and probably kind of level off. So again, something that we need to take into account when we're doing the budget for next year, Jim, you know, just to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. I like that. I know we have last year's, but going back- we'll Oh, have we have work. 2020, yep. 2021, and 2022. I have three years of Perfect. In, in this format. Perfect. So we'll be able to look, take a look back and, and calculate uh, I think next. I might, have, I might have some of 2019 or 2019 as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I have everything yeah. in, in hard copy too. Um, if we look at category 429, so that I was able to break out, um, the sewer enforcement over the sewer inspection fee, um, that kind of mirrors category number 310.125. If anyone's looking at this in any detail, that was, uh, our, around a, a our, our, our revenue. Yeah. So we're going to see like, as we, um, uh, are doing the sewer levy, we're going to see if those numbers kind of mirror each other. Um, and I'm hoping that that kind of works uh, out very well. All right, let me see what else I've got here. Uh, we jump down to, oh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, go back to 409. I'm so sorry about no, that. Okay. And this is this is a category that I think we had trouble with a little bit last year's categorizing mm -hmm. small tools and this and that. So um, it seems like the number for 409.26, it's hard just to categorize when I receive bills in like, this is a small tool. Maybe I should just ask which, what the heck is this for? I mean, I recognize what the things are, whether it's particularly a small tool or it's a building supply or something more. So it's just kind of tweaking those numbers there, or maybe just again, yeah. considering the budget for next year, we're going to increase that. Was that 697 part, part of that the leaf flower? I think so. Okay. Cause that might've been able to be accrued in one building of the like, supplies. well, there's, there's a, I think there's like a tools thing for like road. Yeah, so, yeah, it just we'll take I mean, a, we'll take a look at it. Yeah, and maybe so I mean, see. I think I think it'll balance out. In yeah, the sense that we we did budget for like road and truck repair item tools, and yeah. we could we could consider that a road work tool because they're using it for road work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, category four, ten, four, eleven, four, twelve. Just to let everyone know, those are fees that we pay for dispatch. 
Um, and uh, it to me, it just like looks a little bit funny when it pulls up on uh, as a budget item. I don't know if we need to recategorize. What happened with the ambulance, the four, uh, 4 12, 30 other services? So <clears throat> that is the total lump sum that goes in there. I have to pull it up on, okay. the, on the computer system. So that's, this is like old dispatching fees yeah. and things. Yeah. I'm just, I'm confused why it's 12,000 rather than right. 4,000. Right. So, so I have to pull okay. it up and, and review that. Okay. So I apologize. I apologize. After a while, all these numbers just look like ants on a page as I'm clicking and doing all these things. Um, scroll down to 493.48, the 490 category. Um, and so under communication website and multimedia, I include the purchase of computer items. I don't know if we wanted to switch that over to office um, supplies. I would, I would say probably so, office. I thought there was a technology category too. I, Let me check the budget because okay. that might, that might accrue okay. under a different one because we had figured buying things like a printer right. as that. So let's, let's see if we can't shift yeah. that to a different okay. code of account. All right. And I think that was about it that I have for discussion. If anyone has any detailed concerns, just let me know. So other than that, the only other thing I've been looking into is uh, looking to see what we could do for roads and funding and stuff like that. Um, U.S. Department of Transportation has some grants and programs. Um, uh, one of the things I was looking at requires a $10 million minimum. Now, of course, we could, you know, go for that, that's, but at the same time, they want 49.1% of the mon money down. There are lending programs, but I have to look into that. And it's just, we've got, I know we talked about the workshop meeting, there's at least 10, 10 miles at least that need full depth reclamation. And with increased costs, things like that, we, we have got to look what we can. I spent, I think at least an hour, if not more looking up grants and, and any kind of funding yesterday. There's not much. There's not much from federal. There's nothing for, um, I didn't really see much in, as far as the state goes, but I am looking and looking and looking and looking to see what we could do about our roads because $600,000 budget a year isn't going to do much for us. So if anyone <laughs> comes across anyone, let me know. And Butch, if, if you're, if you have time and you want to help me look at up stuff as a roadmaster, you know, Andy, you could think of, I'm uh, desperate for uh, funds to fix our roads. Andy, if you come across anyone that knows that, I, I guess um, we have to look at borrowing at some point. So I don't know if anyone else around here has done a major project and what, what avenue they took. If you're familiar with anything, please let me know. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. there's so many roads that are just so bad in our town. Yeah, so. I know Peter Wallace and I had looked at that at one point yeah. many years ago, and we kind of came to the conclusion that if we were to, to do enough of a capital expense where we took out loans to do a decent right. number of roads, we would effectively be using every year followings oh, yeah. liquid fuel yeah. money to pay for the road work right. we've already done, meaning right. there'd be no more right. road work. Um, so that's that's the kind of balancing act that we need to do. We need to make sure that we're obviously right. fixing the roads, but we want to make sure that we're not over leveraging ourselves and right. Right. fixing exactly. a couple really nice and then allowing the rest of them to go to crap. Right. So if, for example, uh, there was one part of the category that said we could take out a 35-year loan. If that 35-year loan was, let's say, for a $7 million project, um, that would be $200,000 a year. We'd have to commit towards paying that loan roughly. And so, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it blows your mind and you don't want to do that. But at the same time, no one wants to drive around these roads. And there's just, there's so much what if. And, and so, again, I'm gathering information, gathering data so that we can hopefully start looking at something and maybe apply for grants and maybe get to somewhere where we need to be, where there's actually projects that are going to happen that significantly improve the conditions of our road in this township. So, yeah. but it, it just, there's nothing, there's, there's, there's really nothing. Yeah. I, I spent not yeah. really recently, but I had spent a, a decent amount of time trying to find grants yeah. and a lot of the ones we're either ineligible for, yeah. for one reason or another, or the ones that we would be eligible for we can't reasonably implement. One good one is the multimodal. There's right, a lot right. of money for multimodal, but yep. we don't have rail lines that we're, we're going to be using no. in any capacity like that. No. We don't have the kind of road set up to be able to be putting in bike paths or walking right. paths. Um, some of the roads may be wide enough, but we don't, because I talked to Jim McCarthy about yeah. this, we don't have the kind of line of sight for safety reasons that we yeah. can put it in, but then we potentially have hazards with like joggers getting hit and yeah. things like that. Do we have a five-year plan set up where 
you're looking at the worst roads first. That's right? Yes, yeah. To try to establish, so, yeah. yeah. So one of the things that I've been working on, and I actually have, it's one of the later agenda items, I'll jump forward to it slightly, is <laughs> I recently went through and I cataloged all of the roads, every, every inch of road that we have in our township as to where it starts, where it ends, the name of the road, I've assigned it a zone. I might mess around with that so that it fits a little better. Um, if it has crosswalks, if it's got single yellow, double yellow, outside white, um, that way, this will be the start of, we do half of the township every year for line painting. We flip flop, it becomes easy. It's a yep. pre-made thing. This year is this, next year is this packet. And you just rinse and repeat. Uh, road work would then be one to two zones, depending on funding every year that you just go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you go, you just make a circuit of it. And then if there's an emergency, like a culvert going out, you may obviously have to divert a little bit, but to get it in a, a very routine uh, process. That's the key. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I want to get yeah. set up. I want to, I want to get something in here. So even if I'm not sitting at the desk, it's not somebody, something that somebody has to reinvent every right. single year when they do this. Right. So right. and, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about right. that in a second. Yeah, but. yeah, but God bless Sue. Like she knows that there's gonna maybe be an email to coming in. Maybe, maybe if I'll get lucky with a phone call if someone ever calls me back. But uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm doing what I can to see about money and funding and I'm gonna reach out to PSATs hopefully next week and see if they're familiar with any other programs. And so yeah. Anyway, on top of that, Jim said he was gonna reach out to the, like the reps, some of the, the state and federal reps and stuff like that and see yep. if there's anything that we're, we're maybe just missing or we're overlooking that they may be able to, to clue us into. Yep. So. What yeah. was that? Letters have been sent. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Letters have been sent to everybody. Thank yeah. you. Thank um, you. I mean, getting 10 miles would be monumental. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I know we've talked about calculations on this before. Yeah. Um, when I measured everything, we actually have start to finish within our township borders of named road, 37.11 miles. Okay. So that is measured with satellite imagery. So it's pretty close. There might be a small swing okay. there, but that's, that's what it came to. Okay. So <clears throat> they have to double check and things like that, but that's everywhere that actually has paved road. Okay. Like the bit at the, at the end of canal, or not canal, excuse me, shady cabin circle that I, I talked mm -hmm. about before, that's not included in the calculation because okay. there's, no, there's no surface there. Okay. So. All right, so that's a huge, huge project that I'm trying to look into and cross my fingers, get some positive response about. Yeah, and I'll, I'll keep looking too, but I know when I looked before any of the, it was kind of disheartening because anything that we would potentially be able to yeah. do for one reason or another just wouldn't fit. Like right. we either didn't have the capital to do it or it's we don't have minimum. the roads to do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was shocked when it said $10 million minimum, mm -hmm. you know, if we would get a grant for half and have to borrow the other half again, it's just this juggling game. So uh, at this time, we'll move into the next item on the agenda, which is the payment of the bills for May, 2022. I'll, I'll motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Yes, Jim. on all bills except those that are incurred for McCarthy Engineering, because there's no clarity on any of those bills. It's hours and mileage. I can okay. go over so, them. So with that, would, for Jim, for the purposes of voting, is that an I or an A? I vote. Yes, on all bills except those that were incurred from the Okay, I think technically the so, motion carries. So you, unless yeah. somebody changes their vote, yeah. it would pass to you. Over what each of the bills are for. Yeah, and that's if you go to the, so, the other pages there, it does actually go into detail. It out a little bit more. Whether it's zoning or, or, or what have you. Okay. Okay, you got that, Sue? Okay, thank you. At this time, I'll open up the floor to public comment. Anybody wishing to make a comment, please be sure to sign in at the front there and make sure that you, you approach, say your name, your address, and speak clearly into the microphone. Hi, I'm Beverly Brossman. I'm here for my mother, Edna Modernus, at 412 Water Street, Stasburg. We would like to request a handicapped sign put in front of her home. Reason being is one night I came home and there was a car from the ball game in front of her home. So I had to get her 
out, get the wheelchair out, get her out off the high, out of the off the road, onto her pavement, and in the house. Okay. I don't Beverly, have. I have a form that you need to fill out for her. Okay. And so, then it needs to be approved by the board. So okay. I, I don't have a problem with this, but Andy, I think we may. I think there's technically something on the books, ordinance-wise, that that road is technically no parking. But it's, it's something that's not ever been enforced. But I'm pretty oh, sure. Right? I'm pretty sure. Um, it's something that we obviously have kind of turned a blind eye to because of, you know, the situation, but it's not posted now, but I'm pretty sure like we may have to change something there to make that hundred percent legitimate. Okay. So either way, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. So if you fill that out, you'll, you'll have okay. the board support on that. Absolutely. Then um, it'll have to be, it'll have to be approved at a board meeting, but I'll give you the form. Yeah. Shouldn't okay, good. Problem. Don't, don't put it up yet until the ordinance is there, but yeah. we'll have to paint the curb. Okay. Okay. L yeah. L let me know if you do have a sign, but then do we have any blue paint too, or we have to go get some? Okay. Okay. But uh, yeah, Andy, I'm sorry, he's talking. If can we look into the the yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay. Are there any other public comments? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move into the main items for discussion. The first item is the resignation of the engineer. Uh, Jim McCarthy supplied a letter stating that uh, McCarthy Engineering uh, will be uh, willing to continue as the township engineer until the end of the year, but will not seek reappointment in 2023. Uh, should the board choose to replace the firm at any time between now and the end of the year, they're happy to step down and make a, help make a smooth transition to whatever company we select. Um, I know there was a little bit of discussion around this on the workshop, reaching out to some other places. I believe, uh, Irene, you talked to Kraft. And um, uh, another group from Warnersville. Okay. I, I know I haven't called um, the place in Robazonia. I can't remember the name. Uh, it's like C&C &C or something oh, that's like that. What I did. I oh, did. You, did, you did them? Yeah. Okay. Um, They're Warnersville. Warnersville. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I know, Jim, you had texted us a recommendation from some of the other municipalities. I spoke with... Uh... The gentleman that owns technical, and they are in the process of looking for another engineer. It's time. At this time, they were unable to assist us, and I told him to just let us know if anything changes. Okay. So we're we're going to get a, a short list of firms together, and basically, what we did, like when we were looking for a supervisor, Jim, is I want to sit down. Maybe not. We can't do it all at once. There'll be a meeting, right. but I'd like to get some time each of us to talk to the engineering firm and kind of rate them. Yeah. compare notes and then make a decision based on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a yes, yes, Dan. How is this going to affect things in Marion Township, not only in Stone Rock, but we in another area of Marion Township where he needs to inspect, approve there no. we're going to strive to have no effect on that so mccarthy engineering like i said has continued or pledged to continue working throughout the remainder of the year which means they would still be the engineer in every capacity that we're we're still working on whether that's permits for the culverts questions about the roads within stonecroft or, or anywhere else um his resignation is not effective until another firm's appointed yeah. It's, yeah. It's, or, or the end of the year yeah. so they got to find somebody by the end of the year yeah. Yeah. So we don't sure. that. However, you know, if I don't like you, I'm not going to go out of my way to try and help you or to try and do something for you. Will he serve his position? Oh, absolutely. He's I, I, he's very professional. Yeah, I, I believe. Yeah, yeah I, I believe we'll get that the etiquette, the professional etiquette out of that. And the board, it's the board debatable. will be actively watching. Some may, some may, dis, some may disagree. I've known him long enough, but that's yeah, yeah it's going to be okay. I'm sure he'll be happy to send us lots of bills. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, either way, we'll be watching that closely, especially with the developments within Stonecroft and everywhere else. Uh, else, if we manage to select a, another engineering firm quickly, that would probably be, uh, I'd say, number one priority. That and the Colberts is getting them up to speed quickly so that they can pick up where McCarthy Engineering left off. Um, speaking of that, Jim, did the meeting between like you, the HOA, Stone Group, everybody get set up? I think Fred's here to hear about that. I know that Irene had indicated she was yeah. available tomorrow. 
I know Fred is available tomorrow. Dan's available tomorrow. I don't know if Jim Donaldini is available tomorrow or not. He's out of town. I Okay. Yeah, I would say tomorrow's probably a little short notice. Is there any yeah. time, like if, if we about, get everybody yeah. on an email chain, can you what discuss about next, what? Can we, do, can we yeah. plan for next Friday? June 3rd, because I know Jim's available June 3rd. Does Irene have off that day? No. I mean, as long as one of us is there, that's yeah. important. Yeah. Morning hours. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. no, they, we want to. We want to. We want them to walk us through to say this is what the problem is. You know, this is what our concern is, so that we have a little bit of a better understanding. So that when we're reading through the reports, mm -hmm. that we just we just know what their concerns are, because and the argument has been made. The argument is valid. The the engineer works for the township supervisors, not for the HOA. But this is a township concern. And so we just want to smooth out any kind of miscommunication that's been going on. So we want to understand what their concerns are, address them, and we want to understand clearly what the engineer's responsibilities are and make sure that everything's consistent. And everything's legal. Yep. Yep. Did you guys hire an engineer? Uh, if you, if you has, can. Has the HOA can hire? hired an engineer? No, we did not because we did not get the opinion that uh, Can we have Don or somebody there that has some experience? Can Don attend? Yes, you have a couple of engineers in the development. Can one of them possibly be there? Yeah, and those gentlemen have participated in giving us right. information that disturbed some of us, uh, in particular the roads, the amount of roads we think need to be taken down to base uh, is four, and that was the report that we. Is that, is that in the agreement? That's in, the, that's in the, the declaration. I think that was, yeah. yeah. That's that's recorded. Page 16, 17. Did you take, call their attention to that yet? Or do they, are they aware of that? I, uh, I just mentioned it to Isaac, uh, yeah. that I had found that. First time I heard of it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, that document says, the roads are good for 25 years. The car people tested that in the last meeting and said, oh, they're only good for 16 or, or it don't need to be good for 15, you know, 15 or 16. And uh, we would like him to acknowledge that he is bringing these roads up to the standard that they're expected to receive. And then the, the issue of curves, where he has a standard based on practice, I guess I would call it, but he has not provided the document from PennDOT saying that this practice is acceptable to them. And I have asked other resources if there's not been presenting such document as PennDOT. The answer is no. So I, I don't know that I've looked everywhere. But that same sale document says that the curve is supposed to be good for 40 years. And, uh, yeah, we'd like to see, yeah, meet the standard. We agree to have it there. It's a nice thing. 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 It's a nice thing
I'll, I'll just chime in on if it's in the agreement that it they're supposed to provide a certain certain quality of product with a certain lifespan then there may be some legal binding there i know from talking to to pendot people for other things you're not getting 20 or 25 years out of roads anymore like recently it was i think last year before i did the the dirt and low volume gravel road thing the guy that was running that had mentioned that even with the, the hot rolled roads that they're doing they're only seeing like 10 or 15 years if you have something that's low traffic you might get a little more out of it but the the emulsions the way they are i think stuff has changed because of environmental things in recent decades they just don't last as long as they used to yeah and, and we understand well i understand that and forth that we, we realize that there will be repairs required but when i see a piece of curving that is broken and by the design of the curving it's very easy for people to drive on it mm -hmm. So all these track pieces are not being structural repair, they're having a piece of paper, it's having seals for them, which does nothing for the structure. And we've asked them to address that issue, it hasn't been addressed. So, um, yeah. There's, yeah, those issues, uh, those are the prime issues. We have some other things we want to discuss with Although uh, we do have one that we were told the pond was going to be out all of a sudden cleaned out so that the instructor could play liner would be inspected. And the last time we heard the landmark on the matter was that, oh, because they increased the volume, they don't have to clean the sub. So, like, again, this is probably an engineer's opinion required. Um, how can they yeah. inspect the liner without removing the sediment? Andy, is there anything in an agreement where they're required to do that? Because I, I recall yeah, seeing it. I, I can, the last I heard, and from what I recall, I thought that the pond was going to be drained and the sediment cleaned. I don't know if you guys in the back had any comment on that, but that's that's what was exchanged between. Um, I'm trying to remember John, John Andrews, I was dealing with, I think at that time. So I think that was a conversation and an exchange of letters, agreed upon letters between the two of us that that's what the thought process was. Yeah. 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 What time is the meeting uh, on next Friday? Can we establish that? Um, Sometime in the morning. Yeah, I think it's established that now or yeah. uh, since everybody's here. Yeah. Can we do it in the morning? You want to do like <laughs> okay. Jim, what time are you available? I'm, I'm available anytime. So Jim's available yeah. in the morning. So if you I'm available. Uh, time. Uh, uh, we could tolerate almost any other day earlier than we just apply. I don't see a, a problem. I'm, I'm, yeah, I think we can tolerate any time morning uh let's see and my concern is uh must be there okay so we won't set it now but we'll send out an email maybe to yeah. Everybody. yeah, we just get everybody on the same email and say it's nine o'clock work or ten o'clock or whatever. I think the HOA is relatively flexible, other than So, Jim, and do you think you're going to be able to meet up with them? Yeah. I could get out yeah. of the office for yeah. a few hours. Uh, so I know I'm not available on Friday, next Friday. If, if I may, yeah. who, uh, just so I have correct perfection, um, It'll be who is going to send an email? I just want to I sending an email or who's sending an email to start? So, or somebody waiting for me to let you know my... Uh, I don't have Isaac's phone. Okay, Isaac, before you leave, leave, 
I was gonna say okay. leave leave your email address with us because I think we have every every other party involved, yeah, whether it's so. me or Jim. One of us will will kind of put that out into the universe and let everybody discuss. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, so Jim, if you're going to be the one that's going to be there, if you could go around document all that stuff, and I try to if I could ask you, if you could give us, like, as Jim is detailing like each particular area, if you could give us the information that you have, so that we're able to put things side by side, where where you say, okay, this is the curb, this is the part of the contract, this is the part of whatever standard, so that we could literally have things like laid out, and then we could look at to see what the engineer has said about each of those things, and make sure everything is is correct. So if there's a difference between the standard that you're presenting us and there's a difference between the standard that the engineer is, is presenting us, we need to figure out what standard applies, both under the contract as well as, as um, industry standards. So I think that's the easiest way because to me, it's confusing getting email here, email there, picture here, picture there. Yes, we understand there's a problem, but literally if we have all the information in front of us, we know what you're looking at, we know what the contract says, we know what the industry standards says, and now we know what the engineer says we can make sure everything is correct and move forward. Is that is that a, a useful good. way of looking at it? Do we want McCarthy there. I want I want somebody from an engineering oh, okay. capacity there. Okay. Like I know yeah. there's friction there, but I think it's important to have commentary yeah. from engineering so that we can get that comparison. Okay, here's what's legally right. obligated. Here's right. what right. technically is obligated. I if there's any engineering firm that's available that could come out in his, in his stead. I, I, don't again, know how, I don't know how that would work. Right. I don't know either. Yeah. I don't know either. So, so it is contacting. Oh. Just find out the time. We'll have to send an email to. Because I think we know his right. stance on this. Right. right. But, but again, like if, 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 if he's adhering to industry standard, if this is part of the contract. Well, you know, I mean, the important thing is sure everything is lined up. I want him right. to cite industry standard. Right. Like I know we've the, the one diagram that you had sent in, Fred, and right. the same one that McCarthy had. And I think that's maybe just differing opinions on on reading that but i think it's important to have for each each issue i'll call it what irene is saying side by side here's what the agreement says here's the legal opinion here's the technical opinion here's what the industry says here's the PennDOT guidelines if there's PennDOT guidelines and just tackle them one by one here it is figured it out Here's the next one. We figured it out. Here's the next one. We figured it out. Otherwise, we're not going to get closer. It just gets on that. so confusing with all the emails that we're getting. We yeah. probably should have someone there then for McCarthy. Right. Yes. Right. So right. make sure you invite someone. Right. Yeah. I'll, I'll send the email out to Jim McCarthy. Well, whether I he's send it to Jim and he can decide. Yeah, I was going to say, whether right. he whether he delegates or not, that's we'll put that ball in his court. Or that's the best. Or you solve. and Isaac and Jim could all get together, decide what you're going to do, shake hands on it, and we won't even have to be bold. <laughs> I think I I think that probably would be the easiest way to tackle this is for the HOA to agree with Landmark on what should be or could be done, and. So Jim, I, nobody I, needs to be concerned about it other than you two. Just so we know what's going on, one of us should be there. Whether we whether we chime in or anything is is up for debate. But I think it would be important to have like you there so that you have a first hand account of this. Okay. Okay. But yeah, if you guys can get together before then and work this there. out, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> we, we just don't need to work here, right? Yeah, yeah. we really don't need to yeah. be in the middle of this if we don't have to. Okay. What was the question? Because I didn't hear it. Uh, I, I was going to explain. Pushing for pay date, we've been requesting that we can push for pay date fall. Um, and if to the uh, end so of June, we made, we pushed it off to the end of June. So now the pay date of July 27th, or June 27th. Uh, and According to our agent contractor now, that, so that we cannot push that any further. Otherwise, this is their schedule is and the duration of the timing of the possibly even half the end of the season. Uh, it would get pushed to the fall if they can accomplish it. If not, it would go to next year. Even more reason why you guys should all get together. Decide what's going to be done, shake hands, and move forward on the 27th. That, that's why this, 
brief window of opportunity. It's, it's right. It's there. It's everything <coughs> else that landlord has to do prior to pay. That's got to be worked in. There. You know, a little give and take on both sides, and maybe you can meet somewhere in the middle and get it all accomplished. Yep. That would be ideal if everybody could compromise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Isaac, Fred, Dan, anything else on that? Okay. Thank we'll you. Thank you. We'll move on to the, the next agenda item, which is the Berks County Conservation District Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU. At the February 22 Board of Supervisor meeting, we motion to sign this. Uh, we have gotten a document uh, as of May 3rd with a note that says there are some language and responsibility changes. Uh, they included a summary of those changes. Um, we probably should make another motion to sign this. Have you guys gotten a chance to look that over? No. Okay. Um, I can give you the basic gist of it, but I'd say if we're not under a deadline to sign it, let's just push it to the workshop meeting. I don't I don't think there was a deadline associated with this. Yeah. Okay. So long I'm and short sorry. of it, it's, it's not crazy changes. It's mostly just about uh, some of the responsibilities for, for certain things. But... I don't think it's anything that materially impacts our no. willingness to participate with the, the BCCD. But okay. if we don't have a, a deadline hanging, we'll just push it. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Berks County Association of Township Officials uh, paying the dues. Uh, a motion was made at the workshop meeting to pay these dues, which was $75. Uh, this is used to pay the expenses of the county convention. So no further action on that. That's just an FYI item. Yeah, Sue, so is that time sensitive? That's $75. So yeah. The no, that's, that's already, uh, you mean for paying it. We yeah, already approved it. it. I put a copy on it. I put the right, is, is it time sensitive? Um, I don't know. They that's wanted okay. the they wanted the information sheet by June. Oh, June 30th. I was thinking it was first. Okay. So I, I, think I will get to are, that. Are, you, really, are you guys talking about number three or number four? Number four. Okay. Number four. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I was thinking it was like June first. That's what I remember yeah. what you said. Okay, so that's not as time sensitive so. as we thought. Okay. Well, I mean, June first is. No, she said it's the thirtieth. Oh, June thirtieth. Okay, yeah. so June first yeah. is like three days away. Yeah, yeah no, well, that's why. I, yeah, no. Now I'm in here once a week. Long. I don't know how many hours a week now. Yeah. It's just I give up. I don't even <laughs> keep track of it. So. Yeah. Okay. Next item on the agenda is also a kind of an FYI. Marlon and Wilma Martin, letter of credit, has auto increased from $51,384.71 to $56,523.18. Uh, next item is the Main Street Traffic Study. Uh, this was performed potentially for stop signs at Church in Maine, Water in Maine, and Sharp in Maine by Traffic Planning and Design. Uh, we received a report that the engineer and the solicitor were reviewing, and uh, Andy, I believe you have some, some news for us. I have some news on the traffic studies. Oh, the, uh, the stop signs. The stop signs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he doesn't okay. have news. That's okay. 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 Yeah. So when I when I yeah. talked to Jim McCarthy, he said that you and him were, were talking about some of the, the intricacies of that study. Okay, so thanks. if maybe that's a McCarthy thing, I'll wait and talk to yeah. Jim. Yeah. So he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't enlighten me. Okay. That's okay. okay. That's so okay. we'll uh, we'll table that one because that's something that we're we're awaiting a definitive bit of feedback from Jim about. Yeah. I think yeah. he needs to sharpen the yeah. pencil on that one, but I think what the conversation is generated is that there might be the ability to place one yes. or two stop signs. Yeah, that's depending on how you interpret the study, you might actually be able to meet the requirements. Okay. Right. So, uh, so Jim, so Jim asked no, me not to go into too much detail on it okay. on record until we had the official commentary, but I thought he was working with you on that. So I apologize. That was maybe a misunderstanding on my part. Okay. Yeah, sorry to put you on the spot like That's that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, but uh, and even if we couldn't, we could still do crosswalks. We, oh yeah, well, cross, we crosswalks. Sign. We can crosswalks put, ahead. Yeah, crosswalks okay. are, are no problem. They're actually on the line painting list, but yeah. we might actually be able there to. There used to be crosswalks years ago. Yeah, I think right. they just they wore off, but we might We're potentially. Still going to buy those stand-ups. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Slow down. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. they're they're approved. I just they were really expensive like abnormally expensive when we first talked about it and i'm trying to see if the price goes down a little bit because they're normally like 200 and something bucks and they were like 600. Ooh. yeah so i was like we can wait on yeah. that um but uh, that's the plan is to get the crosswalks in and to put the bollards 
there so that people have the, the warning. Because I, I, I think the visual, because it's a nice wide open avenue, essentially, you, you have the underlying temptation, even when you're not trying to speed, you, you end up going a little fast because it's a nice straight open slot, especially when you're coming off the highway. So stop sign will help, crosswalks painted will help, outside white lines will help to visually narrow the road. And we don't have to do anything crazy to put in a speed bump or anything like that. So, Butch doesn't like speed yeah, bumps. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody <laughs> likes speed bumps. People driving the plow trucks particularly. Yeah. But we'll, uh, we'll touch more on that next month, but we might have some good news there. Um, next is the culvert on Reichert Road. Uh, this is being put out on Penvid. I spoke, spoke to Nick from McCarthy Engineering. Everything is ready, and they were advertising it okay. so that we'd have a return of the bids. Uh, just in time for the next township meeting, that we wouldn't have to have a special meeting or anything to accommodate that. Um, we also talked about the, the staggering of the orders. Yeah. Um, we're looking at getting the first one within, uh, I think it was within three months of the bid acceptance. And then the next one was, uh, the next two I think might have been six, six or nine. And then the last one was 12. Um, simply because of the, the production requirements for those things. So hopefully that will coincide either with the permits that we get them, uh, or we just receive the, the parts here at the township and then we have to make it a point of, of moving it to location when the project comes due. When you're done with Ada, I just want to make a comment. Too. Okay, yeah, okay. absolutely. So um, the, the next is also uh, road projects for 2022, which includes the culverts. Um, I have the list of culverts. They're, they're well known. We have them out for obviously the bid for the parts. Um, we sought funding on the one and uh, BCCD extended an offer. I have yet to see if they, they formally approved I that. I didn't see any emails, but uh, they had made an offer to fund 50% of the project, which actually was about even. It was actually a little cheaper than us doing it ourselves. So we graciously accepted that. We're just waiting for their approval to, to get that started. Um, while we're still waiting on some of the permits for like uh, Marion Drive north of School Road at Oscar Manbeck and the culvert at Sheridan Road by Gerald Hoover, um, the Sheridan Road culvert is getting very bad. Very mm -hmm. bad. Very bad. Um, I drove over it when I was doing the, the road cataloging and it's, it's becoming dangerous. Um, we need to talk about if we're going to close that outright or my, my personal opinion is close it to nothing but class two traffic and then we will have to post signs for that at the feeder roads for that so that you don't drive down get to the bridge and then have to like awkwardly yep. back up or do a three point um which will require some ordinance related things in terms of posting signs and uh all that other fun stuff but it's it's gotten to the point that's it's going to collapse on somebody yep. no, I one of these days that. soon yeah did you drive out uh, that plates Safety. Yeah, the, the road yeah, the road is well, uh, they never never cart <clears throat> over the day with the with mulch on and that didn't help. No, heavy heavy trucks are not helping that at all. It's it's holding on by a, a wing and a prayer as it is. Uh, I'm, uh, I hate to say it uh, but do this to farmers, but it's a safety it's, issue. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it's, uh, they'll have to they'll have to detour is the long and short of it yeah um which is unfortunate but I, i'd much rather have somebody to drive a little extra than have their, their tractor trailer collapse and get stuck oh, yeah. so yeah. Uh, I, I go on this morning and now i'm just like it's worse yeah so because there's part of the and they, they have so we as a board, or do we all kind of agree that we should shut it to class, only class two traffic or below? Yes. Okay. So Andy, I'll, I'll connect with you on what we have to do from an ordinance standpoint, if we can have that ready for like the next workshop or uh, the next board of supervisors meeting. We need to move on this yes. quick because it's, it's a ticking time bomb, to put yep. it lightly. Uh, we, we have no, no signs. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll order signs if we have to. Um, so with, so we'll, because of the way the agenda has to be, we either have to amend the agenda or honestly speaking, I'll just order the signs from MSI and then I'll bring it to the next board meeting for okay. approval. Okay. Um, cause the way they, they don't bill us directly. Like whenever we pick it up, right. they, they, they right. mail us the bill anyway. So, okay. 
Right. If we put the signs up, we have the ordinances in place and we've done our due diligence to provide warning. If someone decides to not adhere to that warning and they cause damage to their personal vehicle, whatever, it's on them. Or honestly, if they drive over it with a huge tractor trailer, I think, right. and Andy, keep me honest, if they, if it's posted for class two and you do something like drive a, a full cement truck over it and it collapses, aren't you culpable for that? For not obeying posted signs or to some degree you're, you're, you've, um, you've uh, destroyed public property at that point because you're using uh using it in yeah, a way that's I, not i'm sure there, there would be some sort of restitution yeah you know something like that it's, it's not like we're going to be shucks we're out of luck because somebody did something stupid that wasn't posted yeah it's criminal yeah no, yeah 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 so. small print helps with truck to go no no no, <laughs> no. no. Uh, we, we, we don't want to see it yeah I, I don't want to see somebody get stuck in there yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I'm kidding. I'm yeah kidding. <laughs> just as, as an aside so all yeah there you go all all these road projects we're looking at in excess of four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars um we yeah we will be we did get our liquid fuels deposit just to keep in mind for for um next year we did it's okay yeah we did the reporting for um the arp funds so we still have that hundred thousand and change sitting in the account to use towards a road project, which would make my reporting a lot easier to the state as to how we use ARP funds, even though we don't have to provide a detailed report because we don't need the, the threshold. But just to keep in mind, we still have those ARP funds available to use for a road project. So it kind of gives us an additional 100,000. And it, in, it, it just makes me sad yeah, the, and frustrated at the same time. But yeah, we have we have a kind of a buildup of, yeah. of funds right now, which is going to yeah. allow us to do this. But under normal circumstances, this would be catastrophic because it's oh my about God, three yeah. times the amount of yeah. money that we get annually for that. Yeah, I just feel like we're treading water. We're, we're just treading, treading yeah. water at this point. It just, it's very frustrating. I'd believe it. We had the the one the one road that we had to close the one lane on. We had sawhorses up, and people that's, just kept moving. Oh, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. We had people like Peter Wallace was out the one time, and he actually saw somebody get out of their car, move it, yeah. pull up, and then there's, go and move cement. it back. There's cement. Yeah. Well, I know there's cement now, but they they started out as uh. sawhorses, and people kept moving them, which is why we went with the mafia blocks. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, I apologize. Yeah, we call them something else. Cement blocks. Cement blocks. Cement blocks. Um, so I'll move into the, the line painting, which is uh, the next <laughs> item on the agenda. Um, part of what I've We're done. We're not that kind of a town. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, okay. I'll, I'll work on that. That was my faux pas. Um, I have every road catalog, and I have the list of lines to be painted this year, which totals, so when you look at it in mileage, it's 19.1 miles in terms of linear distance, but because of the nature of how outside white is, you basically have to draw two lines, you're effectively doubling that. If you have double yellow, you're effectively tripling that. So to do all of the roads that I have here, which there are, that's four, I lost count. There are, oh, that's the wrong one. 24. Yeah, I think it's, it's 24. yeah, yeah, it's 24, thank you. Um, there's 24 roads in which we would paint lines, and the actual total linear feet on that, uh, linear miles, I guess, is 29.01. So this would, uh, this would be a total to do lines of $16,779.60. Uh, but that would functionally do half of the township. I agree. I agree. Yeah. That's that's what yeah. I, I put together. Is it's a little more expensive than we usually do, but we usually only do yeah. 15, 10 to fifteen miles. We're yeah. effectively doubling that or yeah. tripling it, depending on what year you look at. We're, we're trying to implement best practices. Yeah. It makes it easier putting things on a cycle so that things don't get neglected. Yeah, and then it just becomes rote. We budget for it every year, and one year you do one half, another year you do the other half. 
So uh, they want to know linear feet. Yeah, I have I have linear feet. Linear feet is one one hundred and fifty three thousand one hundred and seventy one. One fifty three one seventy one. And I'll, I'll send you this file. Okay. It's, on, it's on the Google Drive, too, okay. if you need it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they'll, they'll get that. Oh, I didn't... So they, they want an estimate so they can buy their paint. They don't need to know the exact. You need to estimate. So we have better. Time. Yeah, I know they won't give us the time. That's why we want to turn this in. No, and... because they need our footage so yeah. that they can submit it to buy it. They like they have to bid it out for them, I guess. Um, you know, like I like I did last year. Yeah. I'm going to mark all of these up on a map, a color coded okay. map, okay. Um, and then for future years, it's going to be a color coded map of here's zone one, two, three, four, okay. five, six. Um, not it's not like a grid because of the way the roads fall. So some of the some of the roads, like you might have one for zone five here and another one for zone two because it extends way down. But uh, hopefully with the color key, you'll be able to say, okay, I know which one is which. Um, the thinking then is that every year, like I said earlier, we break it into we, we focus on road work in one or two of those zones and just do that every year. Not every year is going to have every road done, but mm -hmm. we know to target those ones. Mm -hmm. so. Money. So, All right. yes. So, <laughs> Any of these roads mandated for oil and chip repair or any type of mandated? <laughs> mandated? <laughs> no. But what we did last year is I made sure that they did the oil and chip before they did the line painting, which is why, like, Church and uh, Smaltz and uh, God, I, mean, I can't remember the other one. Um, any of the ones that were oil and chipped, they did the line painting a couple of weeks after. And okay. that was. So we'll, we'll make sure that the timing is the same because I don't want to have them put fresh paint down and then put oil and chip down on top. We don't have just, any oil and chip in the silly. books for this year, so yeah. we're good. Um, so with that said, I'd like to make a motion to send over the estimate of uh, 153,171 linear feet consisting of a mix of outside white and double yellow lines and crosswalks. So they need to know which, how much of each. I have it, so. The linear you foot for out. Motion? I mean, I don't think it's needed in the motion, but I'll, okay. give you, I'll, I'll read off the numbers for okay. the record after we roll call. So, roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. So, uh, for the record, Sue, the yeah. outside white is five thousand two uh, fifty two thousand. Excuse me, eight hundred. No wait. Outside white. Say again. Five two eight zero zero. 52,800. Yep. Okay. Double yellow is 98121. I can't write that down. Sorry. Double yellow, <laughs> Double yellow is 98121. 121. Okay. And crosswalks are 2,250. 2,250. 250. Okay. I will get that in hopefully tomorrow. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. And that, that is. Pricing built off of the 2022 price sheet that they sent a couple of weeks back. So that, yeah, that, that is, is that is true to life. Yeah, it's the last thing that's, I got. That's, so. Unless they have updated that, that's that's exactly what, what okay. they're gonna be pricing at. Okay, uh, do you guys have any further questions on that? No, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next is the office equipment. Uh, we do have the two monitors. I don't know if you saw them over in the room there. No. And the keyboards, oh, if you, before you leave, I'll show them to you. They're, they're quite nice. Um, we still need to get a computer for doing the recordings. That way this one can go back to being a uh, like treasurer, part-time secretary computer. Um, at the, the, the meeting, we did motion to purchase a computer. I found a, a pretty good uh, secondhand. It used to be a rendering workstation that would do really well for, for video stuff uh, for less than $500. I believe that was the one that I found was like $385. Uh, so we authorized a purchase up to $500 in case I need to buy like a Microsoft Office license or anything with it too. Um, I'll, when I order it, I'll send the receipt in, but uh, sure. I haven't, I I haven't found it. From the... Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That's fine. Yeah. I mean, I usually just buy it on Amazon. Yeah. So I don't okay. know. But, so you get the point. Um, uh, I do. I have a laptop and that's, I, I, yeah. I was uh, not feeling the best earlier in the week, so I didn't reach out to the other Peter when he was around, but I, I do have a laptop that we can use. It's an older one, but it still works fine. 
Um, and the goal here would be Peter and I will sit down and try and figure out if it's a control board problem or if it's a charging thing or whatever, whatever dysfunction is ailing the speed sign, we'll, we'll figure it out. And I can, yeah, and so the battery, the battery is the first good step. That's the first diagnostic thing you do is, is it getting power. <laughs> Mm. yeah yeah that's that's that certainly wasn't helping but uh, i i have an old laptop that i'll donate that we can use for that um as for the printer uh, i did a little looking around i still want to price shop because okay. i want to get a um uh laser jet black and white laser jet because okay. you're going to get the best like print quality and yeah. cost out of that. And then you had said about wanting to get a, a, a uh, duplex just, scanner. E, e, or, um, with the, the printer, I just need a second tray. It doesn't necessarily have to have two trays in yeah. it, like what we have now. Yeah. Just a second tray so we can keep the checks in it. So we, we just switch out the tray rather than yeah. unload yeah, and unload. I get you. Yeah. And the scanner so we can start scanning in ordinances and stuff like that. So I'll hopefully have something for the workshop to look at. I did a little bit of looking around, but that, I wasn't dazzled with anything yeah. not, not anything i'm putting my faith in you when it comes to technology yeah give me a typewriter and some white out i'm good <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh next item on the agenda is the proposed dog leash curbing ordinance I, irene i'll turn it over to you because i know you've well, been actually, working on that we um we had briefly discussed it you guys took a uh, quick look at it and i turned it over to andy and andy's gonna review it and give us feedback when he has time to uh comment a little bit further on it so right now we turned over to him and we're just waiting for feedback and if everything is okay then hopefully maybe by the next meeting we'll get that on the books and approved so okay uh next is the western burks joint zoning ordinance section 403 this regards the keeping of pets uh we're looking to change the process because this has been on the books for ages um because we're now in a joint agreement it needs to be reviewed by each municipality's planning commission and then each municipality's board and then the joint planning commission and advertise. Um, so I think the, the big thing, the first thing is we need to draft what our revisions are so we can put that over. Um, in the interim, we have instructed Kraft, who's our, our codes enforcement officer, to not enforce, not that, enforce section. that particular section. Uh, instead, if there's any citations to recommend remediation actions rather than uh, a, a penalty of a fine or uh, in in some cases, a threat to remove the animals. We don't want to we don't want to see that happen to people. That's not the kind of community that we we strive to have. So, um, Andy, I'm sure I'll I'll do some looking around. I'm sure Irene will be, do some looking around. But if there are suggestions of other ordinances for that same section that are a little more lenient around agricultural communities, people in residential areas, you know, keeping chickens and things like that, um, any input and guidance that you can give us is greatly appreciated. Yeah. I, this is the first time I'm hearing. It. I, okay, I was okay. I was unaware of it too. So okay. there was um there was a situation where somebody who lodged a complaint, Kraft went out, looked at it, sent a letter, and it was pretty much copy paste of 403, which is a little heavy handed in my opinion. Um, section 403. Four, uh, uh, excuse me, ordinance, the zo joint zoning zoning ordinance, section so 403. It requires a minimum square footage for keeping of chickens and goats and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And the problem is we have a lot of people in our community that keep animals in their yards and it doesn't meet the, yeah. the minimum requirements. And now that I'm thinking about it, as far as who else we're partners with, I'm sure they have the same situation yeah. in their, their localities as well. So yeah, we're most yeah. of the people in the joint are uh, agricultural or close to agricultural right. anyway. So um, yeah. I'd imagine it might be if worst case scenario, it's an exception for Marion Township and we, we pay the cost on it, but it may be a situation that some of the other ones are interested in maybe making a change too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so this is the, the keeping of one or two chickens or ducks, geese, similar fowl, yeah. shall be permitted on a lot with a minimum lot area of one acre. Yeah. So I guess those that are less than one acre right, would be right. and that's included. And that's what you want to Yeah, yeah that's, that's what we want to adjust a little bit. You want to? Oh, we need, we need to look at it and talk about it, but okay. we basically, yeah. we, we live in an agricultural community. So there's handfuls of people just on main street that do keep Chicken. like poultry and things like that. Yeah. And as long as they're being respectful about it, they're not inconveniencing your neighbors. The chickens aren't getting out and pooping everywhere, terrorizing somebody's like garden. Then I don't see a, a real reason why the way our community is set up that you shouldn't be allowed to do that as long as you're being yeah. respectful. Mm -hmm. One to one to two. Well, I mean, I, one or two. Yeah, I think one, one one to two, one to two might be a little low, yeah. honestly speaking. But 
I, I don't know if we set a, a number value or we, we set the responsibility of, like I said, keeping them on your property or keeping them from creating a, an adverse health condition or damages to your neighbor's property or mm. what the wording is on that. But I, I think we need to, we need to tune it a bit. Yeah, exactly. if, they're, if they're in a pen or in a fence. Mm. Right. Well, I guess to, to yeah. give, if you look at the leash curbing ordinance, part of the curbing ordinance also keeps animals as far as um, keeping feces within your control as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that would, I think, again, looking at the language, can you make sure that that bleeds over into, uh, I think I just worded it as animals, you know, bleeding over into any animal that you have under your control, possession, et cetera. Have you, um, leashed, for, have you leashed your chicken? Well, well but still, <laughs> but, but we know animals can't exactly control where they go. But us as owners certainly can clean up after them. So, you know, the two would kind of work in conjunction. Yeah. Yeah. We're not allowed to have chickens. Yeah. So, I mean, two dogs. So, let's put it this way even, even if our zoning allowed it, but your HOA prohibited it, it's the HOA is technically the more restrictive one. Right. So we could still so permit it. That needed to be in there. No. no, I don't. I don't think it no, needs no, it to be. Does. So, like, um, yeah, I, I'm just thinking of. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff going through my head, but it, hmm. I think I have a zoning decision from a couple of years ago in Sinking Spring where you put on a number of conditions that are common, like common sense type conditions mm -hmm. on. That sounds perfect. I'd love to a, see that in yeah. a residential area. Yeah. So maybe that's a good starting point. I have to. Yes, yeah. that yeah. often I can send that out. Yeah, that'd be great. It's just be great. some language to maybe start with. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I know there's lots of chickens on Main Street because the day of the car show, they were all crying. <laughs> <laughs> driving. Thanks, driving. Angie. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, next is the Western Burks Joint Zoning Ordinance. Or, excuse me, we, we just, just did, did that. that. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Lost my place there for a second. The Cold Summit invoice. Um, they don't seem to want to pay it. Oh, okay, so so this again that at the workshop we talked about that and that issue's been forwarded to Andy. So that's something that I'm waiting for feedback from Andy. He's been in communication with that group to see what what's going on there. So in that little sidebar is part of that was a traffic study that was done with Wilmersdorf Borough, and so we're trying to get hold of them to get them to split the bill, which reduces our costs, but at the same time. It's it's for the communications between Andy and the group that was handling this cold summit plan at this point. I think I don't have an answer yet. Uh, right, right, I'll, yeah, have more, yeah. I'll have more. Yeah. Next. I, I would have yeah. been surprised if you did between yeah. Saturday and no, now. That's okay. Well, their answer was that they didn't authorize it. Yeah. Right. Right. But they did pay a prior. They requested. Bill. They yeah. requested the meeting. My point was they they requested those two meetings, right. Right. and um, really the work that we did was based on on their requests yep. and their anticipated development. Right. So, I mean, if, if they weren't in the picture, we wouldn't spend any money. Right, mm -hmm. so right. That's exactly. kind of what my point was yeah. to them. I don't know how far we're gonna get with that. Legally, it's on a- Yeah. They didn't even get Peter and I's bill. Say again? They didn't even get our bill. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Total amount was we're just shy of 10. 9, 000, uh, a little over 9,100. Yeah. There's the traffic study that was done. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. will be split 50 50 with Lomo Store. Yeah. yeah. So we were, we were looking at about four grand between yeah. the two municipalities yeah. each. Uh, my question would be the following Do you want to spend more than $4,000? No. But our attorneys no. collect. No. no, and I don't. I don't think for no. what Andy is doing, we're not going to. We're not going to get that route. No, we're no, just no. going to see if it's something that can be. And and that that traffic study was worth every penny because I, I, I would agree. Cold Summit is not in the picture anymore. Yeah. I, I would agree. I just if we could not have to pay it, I'd prefer to not right. have to pay it. Right. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Next up on the agenda is the Act Five Thirty Seven. As we all know, the SEO has started doing inspections in the Northwest District. Um, as a gentle reminder to everybody, the DEP, Tim Wagner specifically, has commented that everybody has to do these inspections. It's PA state law. No one is exempt. Uh, the next step for the Act 537, as well as a number of other things that we're working on, is an income study. Um, I've been talking to Joe Baldas, who works as a, a consultant, more or less, from uh, Colleen Terry with Econ Partners. 
Um, he's reviewed the plan. There's a number of things that he, he had questions and concerns about. Uh, one of them is the numbers that are cited in the plan for cost are all from 2013. I, I recall asking for updated numbers from McCarthy. I can't off the top of my head recall if they sent them over or not, but we need to update them or have them updated to 2022 numbers. Yeah. Um, one of the examples that he cited is the one of the lengths of PVC pipe for the pressurized portion of it is listed as $35 a length. They're now $135 a length. So the, the cost figure on that is going to be astronomically different. Unfortunately, yep. probably much more expensive because of yep. the whole supply line problems that we have right now with everything else. So um, I'll be reaching out on getting that. Yeah. They may, like I said, they may already have it. I might've just missed it, but uh, getting those revised numbers so that they yep. can effectively do the income analysis for feasibility to pay for the project and feasibility to pay for the, the ongoing O&M and so the, the income project. study goes out to the residents. Is that correct. correct? It is. It is an anonymous yeah. third-party thing where they, yeah. they do an income study based on on that. And yeah. The more honest and accurate information we get, the better. Because yeah. if we don't have that, we have to rely on census data, which it, it's a gamble. It could work yeah. in our favor. It could not. Yeah. If I could just ask everyone, please, if you get that income study, please fill it out because it means a lot to us, not only for this project but for other projects, because there are other grants mm. that are conditioned upon. Um, if we meet certain requirements, we could get a USDA grant up to 70% for other items. And that's huge. That's significant to us. So yeah. if everyone can please, please, when you get it, fill it out. And I, I want to once again yeah. reiterate that it is entirely anonymous. It yep. is, everything is aggregated by the third party. We do not see any of the raw information. We simply get, here's the demographic information. Households of this many people in this area make roughly between this range and this range. People in this demographic make this. That is it. There is, so there, we're, we're talking to a, a third party called um, econ the Partners. Econ Partners, thank you. And Econ, uh, e econ Partners. And uh, whether it's Econ Partners or anybody else, it works the same way. They, they go out, they survey it, they aggregate it, and we don't, yeah. I understand. yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah, so yeah. There, there's many companies that do this, but this one was a referral and they've been very, very pleasant to work with so far. They've been very accommodating and they haven't billed us for any of the initial review, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, but the goal here is to get a good understanding beyond the census data because the census data is a little stale and not everybody is the most honest on the census data a lot of times. So the more accurate picture we have, the better equipped we are to request grant funding for Act 537 or grant funding for if we're gonna do something with the playground or even things like if we find a, a, a road grant that's for low income communities, if we can actually prove that we're a low income community yep. that opens up a lot of doors. Yep. So. And we know we have a lot of retirees mm -hmm. in our area. Exactly. So. Don't Stonecroft have to be eliminated from part of that? Technically, yes. So the so one- sewage in, don't right. Yeah, so the, the thing that is kind of vexing about the income study as it relates to some of the state things, especially the Act 537, you're not allowed to do a segmented income study. You can't just do an income study of like the affected area because that would be a very different result than if right. you did the entire township. What the DEP requires is the entire township, the right. aggregated total of your, your residents which I think is going to put us at a, a bit of a disadvantage because it, well, if you look at it on Main Street, there's a lot of retirees on Main Street. There's probably some people that are well off too, but then you have pockets of other people, like mm -hmm. not saying one thing or the other about Stonecroft, but you tend to have a, a higher uh, property value there, which usually means higher income, um, which will probably put us at a bit of a disadvantage when you take that and, and average it across all like 500 or 600 homes in the community. Well, I can see that being part of the study for grants for other yeah. things right. other than sewage. Yeah. There's always right. sewage. Here. Yeah. Unfortunately, they it would don't. be nice if they could put an asterisk. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Know, or, yeah. or at least pull, pull that out. So, not pull it out. Oh, yeah. Study, but just yeah. mention it. I mean, I think, yeah. you know, I think if we I asked them to, they certainly could, really that they could say, like, here's, here's the, the bit that's required by the state. However, if you look at only the impacted areas, the, the average is X. But it's actually why if you look at it and then yeah. we might be able to make an argument whether it's directly with the dep as part of this or if we had to take it to court hopefully we don't but if we had to take it to court we can say like look this is absurd because here's right. here's what it turns out to in real life it's an yeah. important footnote exactly yeah. Should make. Yeah. yeah i'll make a i'll make a note to remind them about that but that's that's um that's a good point
Okay. Uh, any other questions regarding yeah, that? No, I'm just uh, again the data is useful to me. So yeah, so there's a lot yeah. of things that you can you can make yeah. an argument one way or another, but until you have yeah. hard data to back yourself up, it's subjective at yep. best. So. Okay, next is the holding tank ordinance and agreements. Uh, the SEO suggested that both of these be reviewed. Okay. Um, the so only quick, criticism I quick, had, quick, yeah, since, go ahead. since the workshop yeah. meeting, mm -hmm. I included that uh, concern to Andy and that was forwarded an email. Okay, perfect. And since it was a 2004 ordinance, I just, well, as we found yeah. out, we need some of our ordinances reviewed and refreshed so that your concern about the time frame was forwarded in that email to Andy. Yeah, everything else is, I think, pretty pretty easy on that. That's a lot of common yep. sense, but that's the only thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way was the, you must connect by a certain date. Cause a lot of cases, yeah. if you're not in the affected area, you're probably never going to get right. connected. Right. Um, and it's nice because Alan is extremely thorough and mm -hmm. I reread the letter that he sent to us and every point he reviewed the ordinance, every point that he had was actually included in there. He thought it was very thorough, but again, because we're finding out some of our stuff is stale, we want to make sure they're updated and, and kept on track. Certainly. Sure. Oh, so when when we're talking <laughs> about the, uh, the 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 holding tank ordinance, this is if you have a holding tank at your property rather than like a sand mound or a septic system. Right. The original uh, agreement and ordinance references uh, a, a specific date that you would have to hook up to a municipal system, like a, a gravity within, fed within sewer. one year of yeah. the sewer being implemented which is just kind of silly because even like if we just ignore the the act 537 as it calls for like the gravity system down main street and through like sheridan and canal and everything else you're going to have people in other areas of the township where we're not putting in a municipal project we're not even talking about putting in a municipal project so it doesn't make sense to have that requirement formally there for somebody to hook up to a system that is never going to be there or will probably never be there Unless there we could be, because we we would have in the event public sewer did come in, we'd mm -hmm. have a mandatory connection. Order. Yeah, there's there's a mandatory hookup ordinance. But if you're talking about properties that or houses that would not be yeah. within the yeah yeah if they're not linear within, feet yeah if they're not within that area, it doesn't make sense to have the the holding tank agreement say you got to hook up in here when it's yeah. not right. it's not going to be it. yeah. Okay. Uh, Moving on to the last item on the agenda, that's to amend the International Property Maintenance Code, Section 106.4, which is the violation penalties. Uh, this was requested by Jim to review that to, uh, to potentially increase fines. Um, Jim, since this was uh, kind of something that you had put forward, do you want to you want to take the rein on that? Uh. Yeah, the ordinance that's on the books right now is from 2002, I believe. It's 20 years old. And there's some restrictions in there. Well, I'll just give you the example. We had the engineer wanted a resident to do a stormwater study to erect a 140 square foot sheet. Oh, uh, Jim, Jim, that's actually, not that's not, not this. That's not, not this. This is the, uh, the international property maintenance. Oh, the maintenance? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we made some changes to that, didn't we? Yeah, I think there's. Uh, I don't. I don't see it in the packet, but uh, there was suggestions on changes for that. It's all the way at the end. Yeah, this well, I, I'm, the end. I mean, I'm, I'm looking one, at. It. I can. I can. Yeah, can you summarize? Uh, since I did it, I'll explain it. But we just kind of clarified and strengthened the, the the penalty clause in the International Property Maintenance Code ordinance that we have, mm. which adopts. International Property Maintenance Code. Mm. So we we passed an ordinance in 2018 to adopt the code. Mm. Um, but this this makes sure that we have the ability to give out max funds. Mm. So if you bring the matter as a, as a criminal matter as a summary offense um, by craft, mm -hmm. it's a max fine of thousand dollars, minimum hundred, max thousand. So and that's the limit that's set by the set class township code. Okay. Yeah, I I didn't see it based on that explanation. I don't have any objections. It's a relatively minor change. Yeah, we talked about it a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah, it was a little bit better. Just keep in pace with inflation. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so we need to advertise that. Okay. Uh, okay. I just wanted to show it to everybody in the draft form. Thank Jim, you. Jim, do you want to do the honors to make a motion to advertise that? 
Oh yeah, I'll make a motion to advertise uh, the maintenance code section 106.4, violation penalties, increasing fines. Oh. Roll call, Peter. Okay. <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay, at this time, that's the last item on the agenda. We'll move into comments. Um, police report wise, uh, there were actually a little more citations this month than previously, there were 12. Uh, there were 10 EMS call outs and uh, really not much else. They did a bunch, a bunch of security checks. They usually do between 40 and 60 in a month. They had 48. Um, so other than, other than that, very, very quiet other than the citations. Um, next question I had is, Sue, did we hear back from Kraft about the whole John Showers garage thing behind the restaurant? I haven't heard anything back. Okay. Let's... Last I heard uh, he was served eviction, but that's a whole other. Yeah, I know it's it's difficult the to eviction evict. Eviction laws nowadays. Yeah. It's... Okay, I'll I'll reach out to like Glenn or somebody at Kraft and see if they can give me a, a status update because that's just kind of lingered. But again, I know it's difficult to evict mm -hmm. people in PA. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only other comment I had because I know Jim, you're going to cover the Mr. Allseg stormwater thing. So Irene, did you replace that stop sign? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you oh, actually, let me let me redact that before I move on. Um, which, while we're on public record, um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to find a copy of a map, large map for you, and I'd like you to take some time over the next couple of weeks to catalog where we have signs everywhere as idea. accurately as possible. Stop signs, so speed we actually sign. actually have a because Dave started that when he was on the board. Okay. Um, I think it's called Sims Sign Inventory maintenance yeah like that. yeah i think um, it's like it's sims um and yeah. he started to do that on a computer okay good good because if I we don't know if yeah, I, I, that computer here I, but, um. I can turn it <laughs> i can turn it into a digital copy but i need somebody to i'll, I'll do it too but i, I need mean, a fact check on he, we have I mean, this he stop could sign probably here refresh his memory and get back into it okay but he was inventorying every single sign yeah, that's cool. and when he replaced the sign he okay yeah, because that. that's what I want to I want to get us to is I want to have an inventory of all the signs. That way we can look at it and go, okay, state statute says you should have a speed limit sign every 500 feet. We have a section of road that has one every 1200. Yeah. Um, that way we can easily go in. We can keep a, a running record of it, but we can also build a speed heat map off of, okay, we've got 45 miles per hour here, 25 miles per hour here, and we can visualize how fast or slow traffic is moving. So I could do, I could do neat things with the maps too, that would be awesome. but, uh, part that of that is that. I need, I need the, the data. I need the input on, this is where this sign is. This is where this sign is, this is where this sign is. It actually had, um, GPS. Or oh, that's, that's even better. GPS coordinates yeah. 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 The lines of latitude and longitude. Yeah. Yeah. That's, cool. yeah. So that's Mark where signs are, but yeah, that's, I want, I want the data collection. And like I said, I'll, I'll do a little bit of it too, but I think it's, it's better if it's not single input, like if you do it and I do it and Irene does a little, and even Jim does a little, that will get a, a very accurate picture of things. Um, I'm not so good with directions. Uh, it's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can give you a, I can. <laughs> We so, should not drive around. I, uh, I, yeah. I have a route yeah. that I drive that you yeah. basically you have very little double back yeah. on that, that you can start on the east side, work your way north, work your way south, and you can kind of make a, a, a serpentine of the, of the entire township. So I'll send that your way. But the, the goal here is a lot of these things that maybe were started, but never finished or never, or never well, done. No, I mean, he was off the board. Well, yeah, yeah. Things, yeah. So. but I want to get us much like the, the road stuff that we talked about that we have all of this documented that it's not something that if somebody yeah. goes i have no idea where that's right. if there's a stop sign there or not right. or whatever i want to have this so that it's just right. there but it's also making the data accessible yeah. so like everything that i've done to revamp the treasurer's job mm -hmm. is available so that if something were to happen to me you could sit down at the desk and say okay now what but easily find all the information in the computer all mm -hmm. the information in books and everything in the drawers so that it's it's very intuitive mm -hmm. so yes um, Yep. Well, I, I was actually going to see if I can get you a copy from like McCarthy Engineering. It doesn't have to be in color or anything, just yeah. something that you could give me like a red X for a stop sign or like write like 35 if it's a 35 mile per hour sign, just to give me something to, to start with. Um, I still need to, to digitize the, the notes that I took about the plowing pattern. I have that, you know, uh, that's what, yeah, that's what's on there right now. Yeah. So that's, that's the other half that is I'm making a, a 
plow path map for big truck little truck the truck so i could get used to the stick shift again i'll go with you you'll give directions and i'll turn and maybe we'll get there so uh, at least you you were not no no i know it's just been a long time yeah uh, I'll, I'll come out with you i'll come out we'll find a nice day okay the other thing before i forget uh, butch um the uh Richland Road. Next time we get cold patch, um, that road by like Bob Nelson's house is very bad. There's a bunch of potholes that are have opened up just in the past couple of weeks on that. If you have a load of that, if you can take like you and somebody else out, I know Kevin's kind of indisposed at the moment, but if we can get some cold patch on that, it's going to help. That road is in kind of rough shape to begin with, but it's it's boring like just taking the backhoe. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, that worked out real nice. Mm. I think I'm going to do that again. Yeah. Yeah, and say if you if you have cold patch and you're out, uh, pay special attention to Richland Road on the on the west side of town. Do you um, need to order more cold? Do you want me to order more cold patch? Do we need more? Right now. Okay. Okay. Let me know. Um, do, you guys, do you guys need the motion? Um, well, let's motion just to make it well, to motion now then yeah then so i'll i'll motion to authorize up wait, to wait, 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 wait. okay sorry let me know when you're ready okay ready okay i'll motion to authorize uh, the order of two additional loads of cold patch as needed okay second jim, jim seconded roll call peter hi irene hi jim Hi. Do we, Andy? Do we technically need to amend the agenda because that's being um, okay? So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. It's okay. I thought about that as soon as I did. I'm gonna, I'm gonna time travel here for a second. I'm gonna make a motion to amend the agenda to include uh, the purchase of cold patch. I forgot about that. Yeah. No wait, no wait. <laughs> <laughs> I can't write that Include to include. Two, what did you say? two loads of cold patch. That was Peter. Jim second. Is that right? Yes. Yep, Jim seconded. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Uh, the last thing, which while I'm thinking of it, can you call like Martin Paving and see if they have the tool to do the rumble strips off the triangle on 422? Well, I, I mean, I can give you their number, but can you call a couple of places and see what it would cost to get strips cut in on the the... West, uh, eastbound traffic coming off of 422 on the main street. Yeah, I can. Okay. That's... Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll uh, before we leave tonight, I'll get you the number for for Martin because they're who did the black topping the uh, mm -hmm. yep, oil yep. and chip last year. Okay, now, uh, Scott's honor, that's the last thing I have. I oh, that's okay. Um, Sue, so what was the craft code thing? I forgot that already. With the, what they do, certain things, but we're probably doing it right now. But we need to... Oh, it's the engineering. No, 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 no. What were we talking about the other day? Oh, so, um, yeah. um, wait. Because I remembered it, but then I forgot it. So having, so McCarthy Engineering now does our zoning permits for non-residential properties. Um, we could assign that to craft codes, which would make it much easier. I'm okay with that. But let's do it next month's so agenda. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll include that in next month's agenda. Okay, thank, you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Sue. Any it. Okay. No, I just have a headache trying to find money. It's, yeah, I think that's it's more of a complaint than a comment. It's just, it's so frustrating because we don't meet so much criteria. And, you know, I'm just trying to do my best and I'm getting very, really, really frustrated. Well, uh, somebody yeah, but so, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to get attention for a small community that has rural roads. We don't, other than producing food for our community and what goes out of it, 
there's nothing shiny and we don't and have attractive and, and yeah that that catches people attention there's nothing monumental going on in marion township I know. yeah i know yeah. right so one of the things that might coalesce next year is there's a lot of federal money being put out for roads and bridges and things like that that we won't see this year but we might see a shot at that next year that's all that i was looking at yesterday yeah. okay. it, it, it's we don't meet criteria and it's so frustrating mm -hmm. Right, right, but but we're not a large right. We're, we're not right, but we're not a large city. We're not an underprivileged area. It there's no impact on how do I phrase this? Uh, reversing past injustices in our community. We're just a small rural community that has really bad roads and and just finding money. Even I, I'm going to have to look the lending route but just finding that money is so difficult there's really not money to be had yeah. so but i'm, I'm going to keep on trying yeah, we'll keep at it if, yeah. it, if we find something yeah. we'll, we'll jump on it but yeah. it's it's difficult yeah okay uh jim you want to cover the mr uh, allseg thing well uh, one other thing i wanted to cover was the speed sign we got the speed sign out uh we put batteries into it went to turn it on and found out that the control center is missing and we have not located well the, so the control the, is it missing it, it needs a laptop yeah in it. it's yeah. it really isn't a laptop it's a control it's kind of like a laptop it's computer well, i think but, peter, peter had a laptop running on that he did. i know he did yeah. but but the whole mechanism inside the top yeah that would send it's like the sending unit to that computer it's yeah. gone and butch looked through the garage can't find it i don't know if peter wallace might have had it at home for some reason I'll, but it's gone. I'll talk to him. And the Butch, replacement cost on that's about three hundred dollars. Yeah. I mean, if we have to go that route, it's cheaper than buying another speed sign. But yeah. I'll I'll talk to the other Peter because I, I was going to do that earlier this week when I was not feeling the best. Um, I'll see if he has it. See if he can look around. I don't think he probably does. But if we can check in the, the garage and the salt shed, like just no, no, no. okay, I mean, you can even see in there with the cable. Yeah. It's one of those multiple yeah it's, it's a ribbon that slides in and you tighten yeah it, it's in there yeah the piece the control center itself is gone. well if it's if it's actually no 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 yeah. just yeah yeah I, I understand what you're saying. We'll, we'll figure it out but if it's actually missing a control board then it's we gotta we gotta do that just, there's a control board on the bottom but it's really a, a splitter yeah and then the control panel that goes up on the top piece, which is not. Yeah, there. you have to you have to take that out from the inside, though, don't you? Uh, <clears throat> no, it opens up. There's a door. Well, that's what I mean. Like yeah. if it was locked, you'd actually have to. Oh yeah, uh, we could probably put a lock on. Yeah. It. There may even be a. I think one side yes. though is actually the pins missing. Yeah, I just but mulling it over. That's easy enough. We could we put a nail in there. I, I doubt. <laughs> so I doubt somebody stole it when I was out on the road. Is the no, I don't think anybody stole it. I think it's just it's. It's among the missing and it's probably sitting someplace that yeah. God knows where. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk or to Or maybe it was just, maybe it, maybe it quit working and they threw it away. Yeah. Who I'll, knows? I'll talk to the other Peter and we'll see. But nothing got okay. yeah, so no, The state no, of that I, shop, nothing got thrown out. I don't think it would get thrown away either. And the only other issue was I just wanted to bring everybody up to date. Uh, Andy is also going to be working on changing the stormwater management ordinance. Uh, it's 20 years old. It uh, it has some exclusions in it. And to give you the example, we had a resident who wanted to put up a 140 square foot shed and was told he couldn't do it without a stormwater uh, maintenance engineer to come in and do a report. Well, the engineer was going to cost more than the shed. So he was about ready to cancel it and pay a $400 or $500 fee to, to do so. And he called me on the phone and I said, I don't understand what the problem is because sheds go up every day. And for whatever reason, it wasn't really singled out because the old ordinance says that if you have more than five acres, you can only have 20,000 square feet of permeable area. Well, that means that Stonecroft Village should have been stopped years ago, <laughs> years ago. And, yeah, uh, and that's, and so based on that, Peter and Irene and I granted a waiver so that he could put up his shit. And uh, of course, he's very happy with that, not having to hire an engineer and pay several thousand dollars to 
have a stormwater done. So Andy's going to be looking at that. We just need to bring it into this century. And especially an area like Stonecroft, where that old ordinance, we shouldn't even have, we shouldn't have half the houses that are there even built yet. Yeah, and that's what we talked about at the workshop, is like you shouldn't have a rule that is going to be superseded by, like if you look at it in an individual property, if you're on a quarter acre and you're allowed X number of feet, your your bigger picture has to reflect that. It shouldn't it shouldn't be massively I mean, the, smaller. The portion of the ordinance that really applied said if you have more than half an acre, which this gentleman did, yeah. you could have five thousand square feet. Well, he's putting up a hundred square foot shed, so you can do the math on that. The problem with the ordinance is I read it like three times and I I read it three to four times. My eyes got crossed because yeah, I got treated. You, you saw my, my yeah. one. Yeah. I thought yeah. this doesn't apply. It doesn't but then you read the next. Sense. Then no. you read the next section, and it did apply. But if that applied, then half the houses in Stonecroft shouldn't have been built because it should have been yeah. stopped years ago. So, so it's just one of those we things. Fix it. Like a lot of our ordinances, it needs up. Yeah. And so now that we're cognizant of it, it's like hopefully the summer when um, I'm going to try to get those ordinances. Uh, Scanned, it'll be it'll be a review right. process as well. But yeah, thank you, Andy, for taking a look at that. Yeah, yeah. Whenever whenever we have a discussion at the workshop, what I try to do is consolidate all of our concerns, and then we could send in like one email for Andy to address. And thank you for yeah. sending. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. no, no, no. Very comprehensive. I have a yeah. lot of homework. Yes, you do. <laughs> I do. I do my best. Yes, you do. Uh, so I said, you know, none of these are urgent, but they do mm -hmm. need to be addressed at some point. So. Yeah, if, if something like that does crop up, I think we've set the precedence that if somebody yeah. in Stonecroft wants to put up another we can, shed, then we, we just do the same thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, any other comments, Jim? No, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Andy? I'm good. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Sue? Nothing. Do you want to review the engineer's report? Oh, yeah. So... There's not much on it that's new. Yeah, there's not a huge amount on it. The, there's a little bit of a summary around the Marion Drive culvert requests, um, Reichert Road culverts. Um, there's a bit about Dutch Valley. Their agreements are being prepared for the project they're working on. Um, they're not here to tonight to comment on the, the whole Main Street stop sign traffic study thing. Um, Spur Road, this is kind of a, a holdover from previous months. They said, you know, no traffic study is required to have the stop sign there based on the rules about, okay. the, I think, high traffic and low traffic road, mm -hmm. one feeding onto the other. And then uh, the only notable thing is the 1125 Route 419. They're missing some financial surety items okay. uh, around uh, inlets and storm piping. Um, they're going to have to do some stuff with that before they can progress with that project. But otherwise, there's not a huge amount on there. Yeah. They had requested that their letter of credit be closed and they didn't finish all the things. Is there a reason why we sometimes do daily and or every two or three or a weekly report on some issues that really didn't need to have a daily or weekly report? I think they're only called daily inspection yeah. reports. It's just it's just the name of the report. Well we're being charged for the report. Well, well not not daily though. Not daily. Not daily. Okay. But you'll some of them no, 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 some no. of the ones I saw on there, like, like the sidewalks of some of them being inspected every couple day. of days. They were out there to yeah. But we know what they're doing. Okay. They're digging okay. to put in a sidewalk right. and then they're going to come back. You're right. But, you're right. Right. You're right. So, but you, also, you also have to understand some of these projects, we're billing back to those people to get reimbursed for us, and that's been going extremely yeah. well. I see. But that uh, doesn't make it right. Yeah, I see yeah. Jim's point. Right. That right. You, you shouldn't, shouldn't have to pay for something right. that you didn't really need to have done. Yeah. In a sidewalk going down, we know what they're going to do. They're going to dig it up, they're going to pour the cement. They're going to come back later and pull those boards and put put down dirt and grass. I, say, I agree with you. I mean, you could have done a beginning and an end. You didn't have to do four reports in the middle. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. But if it's something that is being overanalyzed, it's probably not the best. But there are certain things that are there are requirements for, right. for that that you have to inspect at certain times. No, I'm like, sure there are. But yeah. Is that one of them? And, and can we avoid those in the future? Oh, yeah. yeah. Because whether we're paying for it or Dan's paying for it, what's the right. difference? Somebody's yeah. paying. Somebody's for paying it. for it. I agree. An unnecessary report. I mean, I, I guess.
guess at, at the same time, I have to trust that they're adhering to best practices. Well, I mean, but, we should still be vigilant right. to make sure that there's not yeah. something being abused. But I, I, I don't think that that's necessarily the case. I know there are some weird rules with like house foundations. They have to have inspections yeah. at certain yeah, intervals sure. of the project. Yeah. I'm sure that there are codes requirements for a lot of this stuff, but yeah. I just can't imagine that there's requirements for some of the simple projects. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it that way. Okay, that being the last thing, I'll make a motion to adjourn. The time is now 8.39 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Have a uh, wonderful rest of the day and a nice long weekend. See everybody next month.